Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja Live, and this is going to be the third episode on character effects. For those of you who are randomly bumping into this video, I advise you to go to the Marketplace homepage of the project, and there you will find a link to a tutorial video playlist, so you could find earlier episodes. Briefly, um, we have been talking about how to add Ninja Live components to a character and some details on camera facing and single target mode. So, um, one of you, thank you Francesco, have been asking how would you make flaming eyes and this is a good opportunity to explain a few things, like how you displace uh, the trace mesh in an object and how you assign uh, the fluid effect to custom sockets. So, uh, let's get started. I'm selecting the mannequin. This is where we have left last time. And we have these effects on the palms. And so I would like to apply this uh, on the eyes. And if I go to the details panel, you could see we have a direct link to the skeleton of the mannequin. Now I wonder if we have eye bones, but I hardly doubt. Uh, first I would like to see how many bones we have and in advance I switch on sockets because I have this feeling that we would like to add sockets for the eyes. Yes, the only thing we have here is the head bone. So on selecting the head bone, uh, here on the left we have a hierarchical view of all the bones and I'm right clicking and here is this thing called add socket and with the letter F2 on the keyboard you could rename it and I rename it to eye left again selecting a head bone adding another socket and renaming it again with F2 eye right so these are going to be the sockets and I'm going to move this a little bit to the right position seems like we don't have multiple selection for sockets so I have to move them one by one here one goes for the left and one goes for the right here we go and I save the character and I go back to Fluid Ninja Live and as last time we have mentioned we could uh, provide these bones or sockets to Fluid Ninja Live components two ways. First, uh, on the details panel, or I could go into the blueprint and that way. Well, what if doing this in the details panel? So, I left and I right. Okay, let's see what we have. Well, yeah, we have the smoky thing in the right position. But hey, uh, seems like the face object is masking the effect almost all the time. We have a sneaking suspicion of why it is happening, but let's just visualize the whole plane and then we'll be sure. So I'm changing the material to a non-transparent one. You see this uh, camera facing plane and yes, the pivot of the plane is attached to the hip bone of the character. So, as uh, this plane is trying to be camera facing and as it is attached to the hip bone, it is getting behind the face object, the head object, most of the time. So what I would like to do is to attach this whole camera facing plane somehow to the head object or something which is close to the head object. Well, again, selecting the mannequin blueprint, I'm just clicking edit blueprint, open in blueprint editor and last time we have added the ninja live component and the trace mesh. As you could see the trace mesh is right now in the root of this character so it is assigned to the capsule component. What I do is move it a bit upwards dragging it on the mesh and as you could see it is linked to the mesh, it is embedded below the mesh 
we should do this to access the bones and sockets inside the mesh. So I'm selecting Trace Mesh, and here the third option on the detail panel is uh, Parent Socket. Now I could do, uh, provide one of the eyes here, but it's not going to be perfect since the eyes are shifted to the left and to the right. So what I am going to do is to add a third socket and you will see what the purpose of these are. So again, I'm back in the skeleton, adding one more socket and I would call this eye pulse as eye position and I'm moving it a little bit. And as you could see, uh, this is going to be the pivot point of this camera facing plane uh, which is created for the eyes and I'm moving it a bit further from uh, in front of the face you will see why it is but this is like an ideal position and I'm saving the skeleton and here I'm providing uh, the trace mesh with this socket ah <laughs> I can manually type it but I can select it from the list here I position so um, I'm just checking the trace, trace mesh size and it is 3, way too big, uh, a smaller object would be fine, so I was rescaling it. Going back to the editor and let's see what we have. Yeah, <laughs> it is somewhat offsetted, uh, we'll figure out why. Uh -huh, probably we have uh, a manually typed number in the position, so I'm just filling up with 0, the location. All right. Let's have another try. Mm -hmm. Right, so we have this trace mesh and it is linked to the head object and we have a much better result in terms of uh, most of the time the head object is not um, obstructing this. The brush size seems to be a bit too thick. So again, I'm going to the details panel, selecting Ninja Live component and I could adjust brush size in the preset manager or right now I'm just globally scaling it a little bit. Maybe we will be able to see the two eyes. Yes, there we go. Uh, how about going a bit closer? Um, I'm going back to the character blueprint and here's this thing called camera boom. And there might be a parameter called arm, arm length. I'm typing in 200. This might take us a bit closer. Yep, so here we go. We have the two eyeballs, the two smoking eyeballs. I'm switching back the material to a transparent one. Ninja Live component, generic. Here we go. Mm -hmm. um, seems like we have a depth fade on the material and that makes it a bit dim. So. Let me define another material and then edit that material and the depth fade of that material a bit. So I'm going live generic per output materials. I'm adding one more material socket. And let me provide this orange one. Yeah, that would be fine. So I'm filling up the socket, providing the number. And let's see what we have. Mm -hmm. Two flaming eyes with no uh, fading defined, which means even if the uh, plane is close to the object, it's not going to fade out. Well, if you could see that little sharp line, we should define a little bit of camera depth fade. So uh, let's just track where this material is. I'm jumping there, opening it up with this material instance editor and here um, in the switches option switches parameter group you could see that by default it is uh, switched off depth fade so I'm switching it on and by switching it on I'm accessing this parameter I set it to a very low number and as a result we don't have that sharp line anymore but still that flaming thing and it's cutting into the head, is fading out a little bit. So the thing is that we have positioned or flaming eyes using two custom sockets. We tweak the material a little bit to avoid this sharp cutting, polygon overlapping artifact. 
and there's so many more things that we would like to do with this but shortly that's the process how you reposition the trace mesh and associate the trace mesh with the custom sockets and shortly that's it and thank you for your attention and in the next video we would like to add multiple simulation containers to a single character that's the plan so see you next time